start with some uh, easy start and then we will dig more. Uh, so I'm glad I can be here. Glad to starting basically the conference or uh, in one of the first talk. It feels almost like a keynote here, uh, but not that many people. Uh, but I appreciate you are here, uh, and we'll talk about the format and control, which are the projects I'm uh, working on, and uh, I would like to share some stuff around that. So, the first thing that I would like to ask you is why are you here? So, one possibility is that you are here for hardware switches because the schedule, the printed schedule is kind of. Uh, Broken. So if you want to hear something about the hardware switches, you should go to another room. This is the Foreman one. Uh, so, but provided you want to hear about the Foreman catalog. So, uh, do you know what Foreman or catalog is already? Anyone knows what Foreman is? Raise your hand. Okay. Anyone knows what catalog is? Raise your hand. Okay. Uh, so, you are here uh, on the right place right now because you will learn now what it is. So, why I'm here is uh, I want to uh, show the features and the concepts and the future work uh, that we are pushing forward. So, uh, as I mentioned in the talk proposal, I would like to also do a live demo here. Uh, so, I really would love to take the hardware box uh, or a couple of them, provision them uh, in a way that there, there is, uh, let's say one is ID identity management server, there is a couple of overt uh, nodes, so overt cluster, and then let's say OpenStack uh, uh, as well, either in HA mode, then I would like to, uh, let's say, uh, install some VM on the OpenStack with uh, WordPress and publish this talk in the WordPress. Uh, I would like also to deploy Manage IQ on the OVIRT so that I can have overview of what's going on there. And I would like also to have ca containers there because everything has to be with containers now. Uh, so uh, this is what I really would love to do once at live demo, but there are a couple of issues with this. Uh, one is I don't have a bunch of hardware here right now. The second is if somebody, let's say, tried to install OpenStack in HA mode, it's not still possible probably doing it in 40 minutes. Uh, and the third thing is uh, we also need to uh, get some more things done before we can start with this. So uh, I will not go through the whole demo that I've described here right now, but uh, we can do another thing. I can start with the demo of this today, and we can finish it let's say next year in DEFCON 2016. So the first thing that I've mentioned is the bare metal provisioning and getting into some working state. So I will first, before we get what Foreman and Cattle is all about, uh, I will start the, uh, the demo so that you have just a look and feel what, what's going on and what, what it really is. So I have here uh, Foreman, in, with Catalo instance on the left side, and I have here uh, uh, VirtualBox. So I would cheat a bit here. So this is not uh, hardware bare metal, but we can pretty much simulate that with the, with the VM. So all we need is run the VM. So let's say I have uh, just bought a new box or a couple or, or a cluster or whatever. I put it into my infrastructure, turn on what I see here, form and discovery, which is a small image that the only responsibility for is uh, basically calling back Foreman and say, hey, this is my MAC address, and a couple of bu or bu bunch of other things that uh, it's useful here, so you then have to write it somewhere in, in, uh, before that. There are other, also other things that I will talk about later. So we can wait for this. Uh, discovery image to boot up, and uh, when I go to the discovered host, I have empty list here right now, but uh, in some time there should appear uh, the new one. So the box that I'm uh, just running should appear here after the refresh. 
So what I will do next is say, okay, I want this machine to be a CentOS 7 with some configuration in it. Uh, we also do other things so you can set up the rules. So let's say if the machine has 20 gigs of RAM uh, 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 or uh, let's say one terabyte of disk space, I want it to be uh, that base, let's say. So there are other possibilities or, uh, to automate the process of from getting from bare metal to the actual thing. I now will uh, go with the variant where uh, I will choose manually what I want to do. Okay, so, so far so good. I will uh, make the size a bit higher, uh, bigger here. So this is the host that uh, called or the information about the host that ju I just ran. So, uh, so far so good. What I will do is use this provision button and uh, say I want the name to be DEFCONF and there is a couple of op uh, options that I would, uh, I am able to select here. Uh, I will not talk about it right now. Uh, I will just say I have already prepared a host group which basically is some template for a host uh, and I said that it would be CentOS and now I'm going to submit this request. So what it will do now, we should start seeing the machine being rebooted and once uh, it boots again, instead of the discovery image, it will get the uh, pixie boot and the network installation of the CentOS. So I'm doing it offline right now when we will get into the working state. So that's the thing that the Cutflow does, basically, amongst others. We'll talk about it later. So, while, so this is the live demo part of the talk. So it seems it uh, kind of works. So we can now get into the details of, uh, of the foreman and the control. So what the foreman, so I will first talk about the foreman, or the pure foreman. So foreman realm is provisioning, configuration, and monitoring on the of your infrastructure. Uh, so you can, from the beginning, uh, you can make the machine to do the uh, stuff. So you can pixie boot or uh, do the image uh, provisioning and then leverage the config management tool that you already might have in your infrastructure to do more configuration and keep it up to date uh, while it's running and knowing what's going on there as well. So. Uh, about the provisioning I showed, we support the bare metal uh, provisioning, but among this, that, we also pro uh, support different kinds of virtualizations and cloud infrastructure. So uh, you can see over here, VMware, uh, Docker uh, containers as well, EC2, Rackspace, and a couple of others. Uh, some are the parts of the core form, and some come uh, as a uh, plugin. And we don't do just, you know, triggering the, the build of the host. Uh, we also do all the calls to, let's say, setting up the DHCP, setting up the DNS. So at the end, when the machine boots up, I should be able to use the name, so the devconf uh, with the domain, and use this to get into the machine. So we are not just triggering the uh, VMs, uh, we are also doing all the uh, par parts around that. So then for the configuration, we leverage uh, other configuration tools to do that. So we don't invent our own config management tool for setting up the config files, services, and so on. We prefer integrating with others. So the foreman started like in 2009. So uh, it's already some, uh, it has some history there, and it started as a dashboard for Puppet uh, uh, config management. And as it evolved, you know, uh, some people uh, were, uh, wanted, wanted to have better overview of the reporting. Uh, there is also need for uh, controlling the content of your uh, what the packages are on your system and so on. So from this dashboard, it evolved into more complex or 
more uh, uh, full solution that you can leverage. So the config management in the Puppet is controlled via ENC. So how many of you are familiar with the, with the Puppet? OK, so for those of you, I, for, for the others, ENC, you can uh, say like it's a tool or, or the concept that the config management tool has that you can plug other uh, tools to say what the host or what the system will do. So instead of the config management itself saying, OK, this will be, uh, let's say, WordPress or this will be database or whatever, uh, the config management tool asks some, somebody else what this host should be and with all the parameters that you can pass in. So this is what the ENC does, so this extension point from the uh, uh, config management. And uh, we have then inform an ability to control uh, various variables that uh, influence the f uh, basically the format or the outcome from the config management. And then the third part of it that comes after you uh, have provisioned and configured your system, uh, you are continuously doing so, is having the overview of uh, what's going on there. So if there was some configuration change in your host, you will see it. Uh, you can see uh, the diffs of, of the files changed, if the service was restarted or uh, put up and so on. Uh, we also, among the integration with the config management tool, uh, we also have plugins for other kinds of re reports. So there is the ABRT for being, uh, to be able to see the ABRT reports on the machines. There is also the OpenScape integration as well for security audits. I will also mention that, uh, and it's on the previous slide, we started as a Puppet-centric uh, tool, but as it involves the Puppet is moving more to, uh, let's say, plug-in than the part of the core, and we are adding support for other config management tools as well. So there is ongoing effort to have a chef and salt, let's say, so, so the, the salt is in very similar integration point right now as the Puppet. It, so anyone here knows what salt, salt stack is? Okay, using it. So uh, there's a plugin, you can look it up for doing the same as the Puppet. Uh, what about Chef? Okay, so with Chef, uh, the thing is a bit more complicated in terms that there is a bit different concept of uh, extending uh, the Chef from other tools, so there is no ENC or something like that for that, but we uh, have already support for reporting and uh, seeing the facts or the parameters of your uh, hosts, and we are adding more. So monitoring is seeing what's going on there right now, and part of it is also reporting. So you can then watch. Uh, uh, question? What about Ansible? Yeah, so there's a question. What about Ansible? There is, I'm not aware of uh, this being worked on right now, but uh, this would be probably a natural step to move forward. So uh, it might be either somebody from the community will start doing so, and we are asked this quite frequently, so it might happen sooner than later. Uh, we will see how far we get. I will talk about the future uh, at, the, at the end. Of the so uh, anyone knows what this is? Okay, what's it? What's it? Go on. Anyone who wants to share what he thinks? Okay. So this is architecture, right? It's not OpenStack, but it seems similar. So it's complex, so it has to be good, right? Uh, so uh, I will give some explanation here, and uh, maybe then it will not look so complex as it does on this picture. So one thing then you, you have to uh, notice here is the boxes there on the top are all the same. There's smart proxy set, smart proxy, smart proxy, smart proxy. So we don't have uh, plenty of different services that we would in, uh, call directly. Instead, we have foreman and foreman proxy. So the foreman is the web UI and the API that you lock in and uh, control your infrastructure with foreman. And then you can deploy the foreman proxy on a couple of other machines, and the foreman itself uh, communicates with, with these uh, subsystems. So 
uh, this is kind of delegation of the of the uh, infrastructure control. So there is the HTTP uh, or HTTPS communication with, between the foreman and the foreman proxy. Uh, so we try to keep the dependencies of the whole uh, foreman setup as low as possible. You know, for the thing that should set your infrastructure up, you don't want first to something to configure that complex complexly. So no MQP or something like that. We don't need it yet. So. Why, why bother? And there is that base. There is integration with external uh, out, uh, LDAP or Active Directory. Uh, we can talk about it later. So the foreign proxies are responsible for doing like setting up the proxy or, or setting up the DHCP or DNS for the host that I'm, I'm provisioning and so on. There's integration with the Puppet and Puppet CA and, and this kind of stuff. Uh, Yeah, you can also have it all installed all in one box. That's what I have right now in my demo. So I have a VM that's running the foreman and the foreman proxy for DHCP, DNS, TFTP, Puppet, Puppet CA, and it's just two services. You know, we can distribute it. We can have it all in one. Uh, as I said, we now are in the phase uh, where the more things are, are done via plugins then via the, the foreman core itself. There are plenty of reasons for that. So if you are using, let's say, Chef or Salt, you might ask why I'm seeing that the Puppet all the time. I hate Puppet, so why I'm seeing that? Uh, it's what one would, I, not that I would say it, not that I wouldn't hate Puppet. Anyway, uh, so now we are having more, or in the foreman core, we are working on interfaces and extension points so that then the plugins have, are the first class citizens in our infrastructure. It's the same for the foreman and the foreman proxy. So there are a couple of plugins for the foreman proxy that are not part of the core uh, uh, and for example, the identity management and so on. Uh, more, everything is better with plugins these days. So uh, you can see we have plugins for computer resources. So uh, if you want to deploy on digital, digital Ocean, Open Nebula, or uh, use the Docker integration, if you install Pure Foreman, it's not there. Just install the plugin, uh, follow the installation procedures, and you will get it there. The same with the config management and reporting. So this is the part about the, the Foreman itself. We can check what happened to our VM that uh, we triggered at the beginning. So it seemed that it, uh, it started already. Uh, we can check what the status of, of uh, in the dashboard is. So uh, there was some report, so something uh, went up. I can try to log in uh, there. Okay, so uh, I wonder if this will work. Uh, Okay, so no via uh, the console. So let's use, you know, this is what I love about the live demos. You get always something unexpected. Uh, so what was our name for the uh, host? Uh, DevConf. Okay, so the first good thing, it asked me about the password. So hopefully this should be the box. And hello, DevConf 2015. This is the configuration management that, or the configuration setup that I've prepared the uh, host group for. So what happened at the end was after the kickstart on, uh, went up, the, the, the puppet was configured and the puppet asked for the configuration uh, converged, the setting, and it said the message of the day. You can see I've logged in uh, with the uh, DevCon to the devconf.demo that dot my uh, demo domain, and everything just works. If I want, uh, wanted to uh, replace that with some other configuration, I would just say, oh, "Okay, I will. I, I want to build again, restart machine, and it would the provisioning would start." and some, uh, something else might happen uh, to, to, the, to the box. So this is about the config management. We can 
then see some reports about the runs. So we can see that five minutes ago something was applied and it says that content of the ATC mode B content was changed. Uh, with, if I set up the puppet in some addition, with some additional flags, I would also see the diffs and so on. So this is basically what the foreman does and there are other things then. Uh, you can, for example, configure the identity management so that the provision box at the end is uh, signed into your realm so that you can then configure it via free IPA the, from the keys and users and so on. So you can use Puppet, you can use something else. So now I would like to talk about the catalog. So there are a couple of uh, hands raised, uh, but it was not enough. So I need some introduction here. So what's Catalo? Catalo is a plugin, another, yet another plugin to the foreman that does, does the content management of your host. So uh, one thing it does, and it helps me with the demo that I can provision offline right now. So I synchronize the repositories that are somewhere on the internet and they become part of my infrastructure so I'm not dependent on somebody, somebody else's infrastructure then. And what I can do is then control of what the host really see, what I can install, what versions of the packages are in the production, what are in the development, and so on. Uh, so we provide a complete life cycle for, for the, from the content point of view. We also combine different uh, kind of kinds of content. So you can think about the content as the uh, uh, RPM packages, the Docker images are yet another format of the content, uh, and it's the same for the Puppet modules. So we look at the Puppet modules as another part, so uh, in equal way as the RPMs. Let's say we can combine it together. And uh, we also don't try to do all the stuff from scratch, and uh, there are other interesting pro pro projects already that do some of the content management so anyone here knows what pulp is? Okay, a couple of uh, hands there. Uh, the pulp is basically the uh, Python tooling and the API for working with the content itself. So you can use just pulp to synchronize the repositories uh, of different kinds and do operations like cloning and pushing packages in, distributing it through, via, uh, through uh, the whole infrastructure there. Uh, and there's also a project Candlepin for distributing the certificates that, that allow you to access the YAM repositories. So we even support the case where you don't want uh, the others on your infrastructure to be able to consume your packages, which might become interesting also in, in the cloud uh, deployments. So uh, besides the pulp can, let's say, do, do similar things, we built the workflow on top of that. So uh, we uh, can first uh, get the systems from external services, and so either via YAM, uh, we can suck the Puppet modules from the Forge, uh, we can download the images from the Docker registry or the Red Hat CDN, that's the same for the, the YAM. And then we can do the stuff with that. So we do this stuff uh, via concept of the content views, and I will try to explain what that is. So uh, the content view is basically a set of all the uh, RPMs, Puppet modules, Docker images that some host can see. So it's like, um, maybe it will make more sense when I will go through some examples. So you take a set of repositories, as in the input, you can run some filters on, let's say, I don't want these errors, this update to be there. I don't want uh, desktop packages to be available for uh, my uh, server systems and so on. I take this input and produce snapshots of the content views. And the snapshots are what the uh, host then can consume from. So, yeah. and then all the snapshots end up in the library environment, which is 
everything is in our library, it's like in the real one. Yeah, describe that. So one, when I have the version there, I could already start consuming that, but that's not probably what you want have in your infrastructure. So you might not want to install all the updates that are available every day on your production system. Like, no, if you feel lucky enough for enough days, you can do it. But I don't think you really want to do that. So instead, you probably want to uh, define some life cycle of your uh, uh, infrastructure of all your content. So you produce some version of the content. You get it into, let's say, development or in the QA where the tests are running against that. Uh, people can develop against these versions and so on. Let's say the QE for version one failed. So, okay, back again, let's produce some other version, update the packages that were broken, go again through this uh, promotion path. Okay, now the version two passed the QE or uh, other toolings. So, okay, we are happy now putting into the production. So you have the confidence that it will not end up in the production until you said so. So the movement of the versions, you know, it, what's in QA in version two will end up exactly in, in the production. So this is basically the concept of the uh, content views and it uh, fits quite nicely also into things like Docker images as you could uh, say the version of the content view uh, is kind of equivalent of the, uh, let's say, concrete image in the Docker and so on. It's also immutable, so once version two is produced, no, nobody will change that. And you can have different versions of, in different environments. So we can also do things like making uh, smaller content views and putting in the uh, more complex one. One example is having a content view just for the operating system, for the CentOS or, or whatever, and uh, having the lifecycle of the uh, operating system content view separated from the content views of your applications. And so you have an uh, application content view, the base OS content view, you combine them together and this is what the, the host will consume at the end. So uh, you can do interesting stuff there as well. Uh, we provide ability to see what uh, updates are available for your uh, infrastructure. So uh, if you are not uh, uh, familiar with the Errata concept, is something that uh, the RPM-based uh, distributions do, and there is information about the updates. So it's not just the package itself that uh, it's the update, but also you need the metadata about uh, the notion of the update. It, if it was a bug fix, a new package, if it, if it was some security issue, uh, severity of the security issue as well. And you then might want to decide what updates you want to have in your infrastructure. So you probably want to have Shellshock or Puddle or Ghost uh, prioritize more than the new version of the Emacs. So we are able to see what updates are available for the host, either it's in production or development or whatever. You can also see what updates are available from the content view in the environment the hosts are in. But we are also now able to see what updates are available in the synchronized repository of every, every night. And you can get also nice notifications about the updates that you get in your system. So uh, I first talked about the issue or, or the life cycle when you just develop your stuff and nothing unexpected happens. So you know that every half a year, new version of, of, the, uh, of the application uh, is up. Uh, but then something like Heartbleed pops up and everybody panics. So what do we do right now? So we can't, so let's say version three in library, version two in development, uh, and others, we can just take what's now in library and put it on all environments at once. It would break your infrastructure, you don't want to do that. So in this case, we provide uh, ability to produce minor versions of the content views. 
then don't have to go through the promotion path that I've described uh, before that. So this is the idle case for things like I need, I have this errata, the security errata, I want to distribute it all, all over my infrastructure. The getting it uh, up to date is more important than making sure everything works. And for these security issues, usually the, the, uh, there is not breakage that much. So instead of going through the promotion path, you, you went uh, vertically and say, the version two in production will become version 2.1 with the security patch applied. And uh, as I'm speaking about the automation of the whole thing, uh, you probably don't want to spend your life in UI. Nevertheless, how nice the UI is, you will always want to script it at the end. So if you, want, if you are looking for the CLI tool for the foreman and the catalog and other plugins, it's called Hammer. So like, you know, the construction theme is there as well. So Hammer is the CLI. Uh, that consumes the API and should provide the, the very same functionality that you can use from the UI. Okay, so one other thing, or the last thing, the, I'm not a salesperson, so I don't have person, permission to lie to you. So uh, I want to just say that uh, the Foreman and Catalog are software product projects that, uh, like many others, and they have some issues, so I just want to uh, point them out so that you, your face doesn't look like this. Sometimes. So uh, there is one thing, don't try to install it on uh, box with something else. We have an installer that sets all the things up, but it's Puppet based, and the Puppet uh, motto is uh, all, do all or nothing. So if something else is running on your system where you install Formula or Catalog, then uh, you might expect the, another thing to not working let's say, reconfiguring the Apache. So use fresh box, uh, ideally that we have also Vagrant setups to you know, let's provide this. Another thing is, uh, despite the catalog is a plugin, uh, we started first as a separate tool, separate service, and we merged in, at some time. So there are still some things left, and uh, you can't install first Foreman and then catalog on top of that. You can install uh, Cuttle and use it without the content uh, management tools. If you want to use Cuttle right now, uh, you should install it separately. Uh, we are working, and this, this is on the roadmap, roadmap to make it possible to take existing form and install Cuttle on top of that, and you have the content management tools. We are not there just yet. And there are also a couple of uh, things that uh, now are maybe not that clear how to uh, use uh, that come from the, uh, you know, having two separate uh, services and then getting to one. So uh, all th that I described here is possible. Uh, we are making sure it's getting better in terms of the integration, but uh, uh, that's that we are right now. And in the future, we can, uh, you can expect seeing more uh, things done uh, around deploying multiple hosts, so instead of just one, you know, so this demo was about getting one host up and configured. In the future, it should be possible to say, I want that base uh, and Apache and something else uh, spun up together, being able to say what's dependent on what. We have a proof of concept of installing the open stack on top of this. So we uh, have uh, a lot of experience or, or some experience with, with this. If you try to install open stack, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we are also adding uh, Kubernetes support later uh, to make the, the Docker integration easier. Remote intentional remote execution framework. So I'm not talking about introducing vulnerabilities to our tools. Uh, I'm talking about uh, making available, uh, installing the packages. We have some support now. We want to uh, add integration with other tools as well. And uh, we also want to be able to build the images based on what's in the content views and so on. So uh, now it's time for you to talk. So uh, any questions right now? We have a mic. Just raise your hand. Then. How does this compare to Red Hat Satellite? It seems like a lot of similar functionality. Yes, yeah, so this, uh, if you know Satellite 6 is, so the Satellite 6 is based on these tools. So the Satellite 5 was based on the spacewalk. Satellite 6 is based on this the thing that we were just presenting. So Satellite 6 uh, 
Scatello, Foreman, Babel. But uh, will you be able to deploy CentOS with Satellite 6 uh, in a corporate world? Uh, well, you, we don't. We have uh, an open source model here, and we don't uh, uh, scramble or remove uh, the things w when it comes to the satellite six. So you can do in satellite provisioning of the content uh, or the CentOS. Right. It, you, you, uh, there might be, you know, with the Red Hat in the satellite, it works more. In, uh, there are things documented more. It doesn't mean that you can use the, the things that are in the upstream. Yeah, but I mean, you, you can support a mixed environment. I'm sorry? You, you can support a mixed environment. Uh, with, I, with I, I'm, I, I'm not uh, uh, aware of the details of the SLAs there. I just know. No, 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 no I mean support for SLAs. I mean, you can have a mixed environment yeah, using definitely. Satellite 6. Yeah, it, it's, it's possible that. There are other, uh, usually somebody asks about the Debian support for this. The first, so I just uh, want to add there that the pulp as well is the first thing that, that needs to get there. Uh, the pulp has a plugin architecture as well, so there is some work done for adding Debian support as well. One is there, we can move forward to this as well. So we try to do all open source. You can uh, find us on the pages. On the free note, that is really active, the foreman and the foreman dev channel. If you have issues, don't hesitate. Uh, first, look up on, in the documentation maybe some issues in the bug tracker. Uh, then you can ask on the IRC, and it's really responsive. Uh, and yeah, another question. OK. Um, so is there a HA configuration for this out of the box? Can the smart proxies work independently of, of the um of a main service or? Yes, yeah, so the question is about the HA setups. Uh, there are two ways how to look at that. Distributing the smart proxies and there are some, some uh, parts of it are already able to work without the main server being up. So let's say the pulp, uh, the distribution of the content. If you use the pulp uh, smart proxy, then uh, the content is being synchronized in the, on the smart proxy. You can turn your satellite six down and it would work. But there are other, other things that we are adding as well. So this is another thing, a work in progress, to be able to take the smart proxy and uh, always being able to run, use it without satellite app. So there is some work in progress there. Another thing is being able to HA the satellite six server itself. And there is also some preparation for uh, this. This, right now, I'm not aware this would be documented somehow, but we are working on that. The question in the back, you, you can say it and I will repeat. Uh, is it possible somehow to integrate uh, slices, uh, for example, you reach all the slices or something? Yes, yeah, so uh, as long as it's uh, YAM repositories, it should work, but we don't test that. So the foreman, so there are two things. The foreman uh, is friendly more to other distributions it's because it's not dependent on what content management you use. So the foreman itself you can use with Debian and BSD and Slash. The catalog itself, it might or might not work. We don't test it. So uh, as I said, it's up, upstream open source community project. Uh, so when, 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 whenever it uh, finds uh, useful, uh, we can talk about that. Okay, so if there are not any other questions, thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have feedback for me, you don't want me to talk at all on at other conferences, tell me on, on the feedback. Uh, and I would like also, as at the end of at any YouTube video, there is suggestion. So uh, uh, 120, uh, there will be talk about the foreman and Docker, uh, and at three, PM, there will be talk about the SL Linux uh, from Lukash uh, that was based on what we were working on in the foreman and Catello. So they are much better, Daniel and Lukash are much better speakers than I am, so I recommend highly to, to get there as well. And thank you for your time.
why there were so many people coming at, in and out of this room. Is it? The, the reason why there yeah, were so many I know. people is that they, you know, the, the yeah, this, they, they swapped the, the, the room somehow. Are, are you sure that uh, maybe Lucas' room is it the right one? The one that uh, I really don't know. Oh, toto je moje. Sa šnapi. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 